there's always a lot of questions about my settings in the comments in my video so today my goal is to show you my routine of settings that I do to be able to achieve this kind of smoothness that you can see here in this video for example I'm in EVR right now I'm not using the headset but you can see that if I shake my headset here uh, over my desk you can see that the headset is connected right now in the sim I will try to show you how I can achieve this kind of uh, smoothness most of those settings I will show you at least twice to make sure you can reproduce the same way when you are trying to tweak your computer using your hardware. Let's do this. Okay, I will show you now the shortcuts that I use to have here to be able to every time that we start the Oculus software we need to make some settings. This is the software that we're gonna use to make this video. Oculus the book 2, SideQuest, Riva Turner, it's already open here. We'll show you what you're gonna do with this software here. Last but not least, Oculus Mirror. Used to stream everything that we are seeing inside the headset. Okay, the software it's located here on C, Program Files, Oculus, Support, and then Oculus Diagnostics. Oculus Debug Tool is here. You can create a shortcut clicking right click here and pin from start and then it will show it here oculus mirror the same thing the only thing that i change here for the oculus mirror i created a customized that file show you what is the settings that i'm using i just use this command start comma and then to open the oculus support oculus diagnostic oculus mirror exit and then use this include guardian include notifications include system graphic interface right eye only size 190 by 180 is full resolution these settings is important flv tango multiplier it's 0.7 and 0.7 and i will show you later when we start to use the debug tool this setting 0 0.7 0 0.7 must be the same that we use here in fv tango multiplier 0 0.7 0 0.7 and you can see here in my debug tool that this 0.7 and 0.7 if you like to use 0.8 for example no problem but we need to change this here in your bat file to open the oculus mirror you do not use the settings for example every time you open oculus mirror they will change the settings for one you will now have to render full resolution from the screen if you use glasses for example you will not be able to see 100% of your FLV. So that's why I use 0.7 and 0.7 here. You need to install Riva Turner. Riva Turner that I'm using is the 7.3.3. I will have the link in the description for you to download it. The SideQuest, I'm using the version 10.26. The link is in the description also. Here we're gonna use only three functions that we're gonna need to change every time that we find that the system is not running great or we have having stutter sometimes we need to change things here because not all the settings that we make on oculus will be sticky some settings we need to change every time that we open the flight simulator or as soon as we close the sim and open the scene again we need to change settings here inside the software every time that i start my simulator my scene is now open in here i will start the oculus so you don't need to wear your headset you don't need to put your headset on your head you can start the screens you can see that both screens are now on if you put your strap in front of this sensor that we have between those two lenses you will see that every time that this strap falls down the screens are started again in this case we can open the side quest stream from your headset with scrappy this is the icon that will open the scrap for us quest to crop and start stream now everything that you were seeing inside the oculus is being displayed here on your screen you don't need to put your headset to make the settings to work well now i will take my controller put in front of the headset and you can click here click in quest link and then launch open oculus mirror the mirror will stay here on this left side now that we are inside the quest link we can start to change things here on oculus the book tool the best practice it's always that you enter in the link close and then open the book tool to make sure your settings are correct as soon as you enter in the link like we are here the oculus software will be opened here there are some settings that i like to do click here in devices quest 2 the settings that I'm using it's 72 Hertz and 1.5 the max resolution 
that I'm using for the RTX 3080. You can and you should crank down these settings if you have performance issues. That's it. That's the setting that I the setting that I change. Nothing here. Oculus is active here in OPEC X runtime. As soon as you open everything, you can close the side quest stream. I'm not gonna use this window anymore because we are already using the Oculus Mirror here to show what we are seeing inside the simulator. And that's it. In the Oculus Debug 2, use 1.2 for this time now. FOV, it's 0.7.7. ASW, I will need to use this one. I will explain why I use this one. Encode resolution is 2016 and encode bit rate is 250. If you use more than that, for example, the difference between the visual quality that you're going to have is not changed that much, but it will hurt your CPU and your bandwidth. So 250 for me, it's okay. This is the settings that I, that I use here on the book too. Now I can jump into VR. I will press Ctrl tab. And now we are inside VR. I will make this simulator window smaller here. And this side, we are using Oculus Mirror. Now that we have this side showing what we are seeing inside the headset. And the right side, the flight simulator. But you can see, I will try to move my camera here. And you see that this winglet is not moving in the smooth condition that we wanted. Because... These frames per second, when we are using max frame rate, this is not the same as frame pace. Every time that we are thinking about smoothness, you need to have frame constancy. The constancy of your frame rate is more important than max frame rate. This 46, 45 frames per second is the maximum that my video card is being able to generate right now. Now I will use 45 ASW disable. Now you can see that it's locked in 37 frames per second. But look how this is not smooth at all. You can see that this winglet in this main image is jumping around when we move the camera. Now I will show you inside the side quest when the magic happens. Here in settings, the refresh rate that we are using in this is this native in the headset 72. As soon as we click here in 60 hertz, the frame rate inside the simulator will now be locked in 30. And now you can see how smooth the movement of this winglet start to, to be. As you can see, all the movements that we do inside the simulator have no stutters because we have the consistent pace in the frame rate. That's what we are trying to achieve every time we change settings inside the simulator. Now we'll show if with 72 hertz that we start to have these jumps between frames. Now we're going to open the task manager and I will show you the flight simulator using 43% of my GPU, the Oculus software using 11% and we are having this kind of smoothness here. If you are using 72, look here how much 64% of your GPU are being using only to run the flight simulator and the Oculus software. Now if you drop down to 60 Hz, you will see that here we are trying to render 36 frames per second using these resources. 40% of CPU and 54%, 55 of GPU. When it turned down to 60 Hertz, you can see that the flight simulator is dropped down now to 30 frames per second solid and your resources will 44% versus 55% GPU. There are people that like to use, for example, 90 Hertz. Great, but look at that. Now we are using 17% only to run the Oculus software, 69% only to run the flight simulator using GPU resources. We can reduce this at least half if you use 60 Hertz. To correct that, we can click here in default, refresh rate. You can see that now it's using 13%. You wait at least 5 or 10 seconds and now you click in 60 Hz again and you will see the drop in the flight simulator usage in, in the Oculus software usage. 42% of GPU and 10% on GPU usage, only changing this setting. The other thing that we need to be aware of, I'm using OPEC NXR2 kit version 1.2 here, as you can see, uh, in the, the settings that I do like to use here, it's to make sure that our resolution is not that high because as we know, the Oculus lenses are not that great. You don't need to use more resolution than 2500 pixels because you will not see that definition inside the Oculus because the lenses are not that great. 2272 by 2304 and everything is okay inside the headset. I can read everything clearly in my screens, no problem at all. My goal with the simulator is never reach more than 70 
90% usage in the GPU because you need to have at least 30% free of your GPU for recording reasons or for if you are arriving in an airport that have a lot of traffic or we have a thunderstorm coming around your GPU need to work extra hard to render so you need to have that buffer you can't use more than 70% because you will find situations that the GPU need to be free to render that situations that are appearing in front of you if I change here for 1.5 I will need to press Control tab to exit VR mode Control tab again to enter in VR mode now we are using I press Ctrl F2 again and now the resolution jumped to 2848 to 2864. We are being able to maintain 29 frames per second and when I press Ctrl F2 you can see that we have new resolution but opening the test manager you can see that we are using now 74% of our GPU. That's not good because you need to have GPU resources available. If we change here to 1 and 1 again, that it's the native resolution that the Oculus start. If we close Control tab and then Control tab again, enter again in the VR, you will see that the resolution is completely changed. We are now trying to render 3248 by 3280. It's a lot of resolution. You will see if you open the task manager that we are now using 90% of our GPU to render those 30 frames per second. You can see the huge difference that the FOV rendering can do for us. 0 0.7, 0 0.7. Every time that you change things here, you need to control tab, go out of VR, control tab again, get inside VR again, and you will see that the resolution that is being used now it's 2272 again 2304 again. and in the task manager we drop down from 90 percent usage to 55 percent usage of our gpu so we have a lot of room for things that are not expected to be rendered like clouds or traffic and everything so as you can see you have a lot of things that we can change in pixel override and uh, in vertical and horizontal FOV here to make sure that you use a lot less resources in your GP. Another thing that I need to explain sometimes when we get out of VR control tab, we are seeing in the background the Oculus link that it's inside the headset. Sometimes when we press control tab again to enter in VR mode, the settings are not the same in the task manager, for example, that now we are using a little bit more resources, 64% of our resources. We can see that we are having a little bit of stutters when moving the camera. Things that we need to make sure it's click here in default settings again waiting for at least 5 to 10 seconds you can see that we are using 35 frames per second inside the scene clicking 60 hertz again the scene now is 29 frames per second 30 frames per second and you can see here that we are now using again 55 56 percent of gpu and let's see if the stutters are gone yeah the stutters are absolutely gone sometimes the link cables disconnect for some reason if this happens to you the system will shut down the link come back here to oculus quest open the streaming side quest to crop and start streaming now we are seeing the image inside the headset i will now click again using my hand in front of headset here in settings quest link and then launch every time you open the side quest like we are doing right now we can close the side quest stream because the oculus mirror it's open in here i can see inside the oculus mirror right here every time that we enter inside the link again we need to open oculus the book tool and we need to set everything again 1.2 0 0.7 again 0 0.7 and then the best thing to do is set in disable and select the first one now we can click in the simulator control tab and then we are inside the sim again with the same resolution and same pace you can press in the simulator here ctrl f2 to make sure your resolution is corrected in this case here we are in 22.72 by 2304 everything is butter smooth we are not losing any frame when we move the camera around the aircraft you always double check if you are using less than 12 percent in oculus software and the gpu usage is lower if something lose for example the oculus
Oculus change because this is something that the Oculus will try to change every time that you open and then you close the flight simulator. You just need to click here in default settings. You will see that everything we're gonna start to climb up here in GPU usage and then clicking 60 hertz again and everything will fall down again to 40% and 12% here on the Oculus software. This is things that we always need to be constantly monitoring to make sure that everything is seen great. This is the other setting that I like to change in the OpenXR toolkit. We are using about 55-56% of our GPU. Using these settings, FOV rendering, Ctrl F2 to descend here, and now off the FOV rendering. We are using 60-61% to 61 GPU usage here on the task manager. Now Ctrl F2 again, and now we change to custom again, and you can see that we are now having 55-54. We are talking about 10% usage that you can reach only changing this FOV settings. You can read about the OpenXR toolkit in the website, the link in the description below. You can understand what every setting it's able to do. So it's a great tool to use. Now 61, 62% in GPU usage. And when we change to custom, this is a live setting. You can see live the difference that is the system is making here when GPU usage. You can see in this graph how much you can reduce the resources in the corner of the images. We are not having the 100% resolution of this corner. We are not rendering the full resolution, but these sides are not visible inside the headset. That's why I'm using a reduced resolution here in the sides, because this is not visible in my field of view. That's why I use the setting. There are other things that I like to use. Usually when we are flying crews, we are not sitting inside the cockpit looking for the instruments during three hours flight. Sometimes we are browsing the internet, doing other stuff, studying. One thing that I like to do is use this river tunnel to lock the frames per second and inside the scene. I will show you why I'm doing this. We are now using 55% of our GPU and it's using 72 degrees Celsius. If I lock the frame rate to 10 frames per second obviously that the simulator will be absolutely garbage but we are not looking for the sim right now i'm browsing the internet i'm studying i'm doing another things but you can see that the cpu usage is dropping down a lot and the gpu usage is dropping down a lot probably gonna reach 60 degrees celsius here in a few minutes when the cooler start to cool down the system so when we are not looking for the sim during cruise phase of flight i like to do that to really reduce the resources and everything will cool down aggressively and then when I will start to fly again I will disable the frame rate limit use here zero and then everything will start to be as smooth as glass again what is the difference between frame rate locked and frame pace we are using 30 frames per second locked to have this kind of smoothness as you can imagine we have a lot of ways to have that to lock in 30 frames per second right but i will show you that's not the greatest way to do that i will disable aws we are now reaching 55 to 60 frames per second inside vr but look how things are not that smooth anymore you can see that we are having a lot of jumps in the frames we have river turner correct we can use the 30 frames per second lock here inside the scene right let's see if we have a good continuous space this is one of great ways to try to do that but we will have a lot of stutters when we try to move the camera stutter stutter again this is not the best way to do that you can try use for example half of refresh rate of our monitor now 60 frames per second if i use one here this will lock the frame rate in the half of the refresh rate of my monitor but we are not talking about monitor we are talking about the screen inside the headset right you can see using this technique stutter stutter so the best practice is to lock the frame rate using asw disable that will synchronize what is the hertz inside your headset and what will be reproduced inside the headset so that's why you need to use this technique to lock your frame rate now we have 30 frames per second and you can see that we have this smooth Let's talk about the settings that I'm using inside the simulator. Here in general options, you can see that now I'm inside VR. 
first here in PC settings using TAA, not using DLSS because we lose a lot of quality in the screens. I'm using DirectX 11, all in 100%. Settings, I use only the off screen terrain percussion in Ultra. Everything now it's in the lowest setting X possible. Volumetric clouds, I can use high because there's not a big difference from high to Ultra. Everything in the lowest quality as possible. Now in VR setting the same thing 100% here in the settings reprojected in off because we are using the reprojection of former oculus we are not using that off screen terrain pre-crashing ultra volumetric clouds in high but we can use that setting in lowest setting if you want it everything here in the lowest or off as possible because i'm a pilot i don't need eye candy for nothing camera settings there's nothing performance here sounds traffic i don't use any kind of traffic at all in data i'm just using these settings flight model miscellaneous nothing here develop mode just to make this tutorial vr settings this is my shortcuts that i use in my keyboard and experimental settings i'm not using anything and for nvidia settings the only thing that i change here it's the power management mode to max maximum performance here in global settings. You can see that in program settings, I don't even have the Microsoft Flight Simulator here inside the settings because I don't change anything there in this flight simulator. Now that my flight simulator is open, and I will show my routine every time I need to start the same what I need to do. The flight simulator is already open. Start, open the side quest, start the screen here in my headset, click here in the power button. Now the screen will light there inside. With the Oculus side quest, I can use quest to crop start stream. Now that I'm seeing inside the headset, I can move my controller in front of the headset, clicking quick settings, quest link, and then launch. We can close this screen right now because I don't need to see that inside the side quest. I can use Oculus mirror that will be display everything that is going on inside the quest link. Open the bug too. We need to setting everything up again. 7.7. .7. It's already here. And now we need to change from auto to disable here. I can open this flight simulator. Click in control tab to open the simulator. We are seeing that we are reaching 35 frames per second. That's something that we need to change here inside the quest. Settings. Change to 60 hertz. The flight simulator is 30 frames per second and you can see that everything is butter smooth again inside the scene and inside the headset. The other best practice is open the task manager and make sure that the OVR server is running in the maximum 12% and the other settings are running here in the manner that we want it. Sometimes things can be a little bit higher, especially here in the CPU usage and you make sure that everything is lower as possible using the 60 Hertz here. And that's it. I know that looks like there is a lot of things that you need to do to make sure that you have simulator running in a good quality and uh, in a good frame rate. But to be fair, when you get used to do that, everything turns to be a little bit easier and everything starts to clicking when you are doing that every day. And so I did everything that I need to do to make my settings to work here in the sim. I showed you everything that I need to do every time to start the sim. I showed you everything at least twice to make sure you can reproduce that in the same manner that I'm doing every day here to get my scene running in VR in these settings with the smoothness that you are seeing right now in the screen. So I hope everything helps. The links of the software that I'm using in this tutorial are all available in the description below and I really hope you have learned something. That's it for today. See you in the next video. Bye.